Hello again. Today we're going to be using the Nano VNA V2 to take measurements of the RTLSDR.com 88 to 108 MHz bandstock broadcast FM reject filter. And we're going to compare these measurements to the VNA measurements that were taken on the website page on RTLSDR.com that advertises this filter. To be doing that, we're not going to be using the Nano VNA in the usual on the bench mode. We're going to be using it in USB mode when it is connected to the computer, now running the newer of two applications that can use the Nano VNA line of products over USB, called Nano VNA QT. So the first step will be the calibration and our sweep setup. So before we calibrate, we have to make a sweep setup for what we're going to do. In this video, I'm intending to take two sets of measurements. I'm interested in only S11 and S21, which are the parameters that I will get by making one measurement with this half VNA since this does not measure all four S parameters for a two-port device, it measures S11 and S21, and then you would have to reverse it to get the other S22 and S12. So we'll just be taking those two measurements because those are the main two measurements shown on the uh, RTL-SDR page. And also, this is supposed to be a symmetrical device. It might not be exactly, but it'll at least be close. Second, the usual use case for this device is with this male-to-male -male SMA connector on one of the female SMA ports and the other female-to-female -female SMA port. This plugged into an SDR here and then you plug in your antenna line and go from there. So I'm not concerned about connectors here or the cal kit from the Nano VNA V2 since we'll be calibrating at the end of this female-to-female -female SMA connector here and we'll be calibrating at the end of this uh, male SMA connector here. So without further ado, we'll begin the calibration which will be taking place mostly on the computer the sweep setup that I'm going to be using is 201 points from 70 MHz, that's minus 18 MHz from the bottom of the FM broadcast band, to 126 MHz, that's plus 18 MHz from the top of the FM broadcast band. This will be our narrow measurement, the first measurement we will take. After that, we'll make a more wideband measurement. So let's get started. I have to make the sweep setup on the computer. Alright, so I've teleported inside my thinking space heater, and I'm going to be showing you how to set up Nano VNA QT to communicate with the Nano VNA V2. So assuming you already have the drivers installed, mine will be on COM5, you pick your COM port. And now the next step will be to set up our sweep parameters. And I said we're going to go from 70 MHz to 126 MHz, use 201 sweep points. We'll use the default stimulus of minus 15 dBm. Then we hit OK. Now that our sweep points are set up, we'll need to set the calibration type. In this case, we're going to be doing a full two-port calibration, and we'll just do a typical SALT calibration with the T slash R option in parentheses. Next, we begin the actual calibration. We'll start with the short circuit. We connect that, and then press the short button. Then we disconnect the short circuit, and we connect the open circuit, and we press the open button. Then we repeat the process for the 50 ohm normalized load. And finally, for the through measurement. Then we can apply the final calibration by clicking the Apply button. And now we should be seeking to verify that we are seeing an idealized through condition. So 0 dB of S21, meaning no loss, and almost a perfect matching. Here we see better than minus 40 dB of return loss. And our impedance is just about 50 ohms. So that's very good. Now quickly we will check an open circuit condition. I'm not attaching the open standard, I'm just checking nothing connected to it. It should be on the far right of the Smith chart, and it is. And then a short circuit condition. Here I will attach the short circuit. That should be on the far left of the Smith chart. And we should also see pretty much perfect rejection there. And last but not least, we'll check our load standard. And we should see dot in the center of the Smith chart at 50 ohms and almost a perfect matching. And there we see 40 dB return loss, dot in the center of the Smith chart. So our calibration is good to go, and now we can connect the device under test. Okay, so now that I've connected the device under test, I've set up some markers here in the Nano VNA QT program. To add markers, you just press this plus button to remove them. You can press the X button. To change their frequency, you drag the slider along each of the rows here and I've set up a bunch of markers so that we can look at the relevant points on this graph of the magnitude of S21 and S11 in dB. So first I have a marker at the start of the sweep at 70 MHz and there we can see we're getting an OK matching 
minus 11.2 dB, so that's about VSWR 2 to 1, and minus 1.7 dB of attenuation, so not too much attenuation through the device. The minus 3 dB down point is at 76.16 megahertz, and that has a return loss of minus 15.8 dB, so still uh, an okay matching, getting closer to 50 ohm input impedance, but now we're losing 3 dB. Now we get into the stop band. At the start of the FM broadcast band at 87.92 megahertz is my marker, we're at minus 53.1 dB down. We could see that over the entire FM broadcast band pass band, we're minus 50 dB down, so this filter is definitely doing its job. At the fourth point, what I'm trying to do is look for the lowest point that I can find, and it kind of moves around a bit as it takes measurements doing the sweep over and over, but that's around uh, minus 59 to minus 60 dB down, and uh, the return loss there is minus 1.3 dB, so extreme mismatch in addition to lots of attenuation. Next, uh, we come to the end of the FM broadcast band. Uh, we're minus 50.8 dB down at 108.36 megahertz with minus 1.6 dB return loss. And then coming up at our 3 dB point, which is around 122 megahertz, so we have 122.08 megahertz as the marker, at minus 3.1 dB, uh, that's the through measurement, and then the return loss is minus 34.9 dB, so very good matching there, but we are still losing 3 dB. And then getting up to the top, my sweep at 126 megahertz, we're losing 2 dB through the device, and our return loss is excellent, minus 27.2 dB. So this is the narrow measurement. How does it compare to the measurements on the product page from the rtlsdr.com website? Well, here is their narrow sweep for S21 here, and they go to 300 megahertz. We can see we're getting better than the 50 dB attenuation throughout the FM broadcast band, just like they are. Their markers 2 and 3, I believe, start and stop the FM broadcast band. They say that the 3 dB roll-off points should be 76 and 122 megahertz, and we did observe exactly that. They do say it's attenuated by almost 60 dB for the 88 megahertz, and suppose that's almost true. Anything between 50 and 60 is, I guess, almost 60 dB down. Up towards the middle here, their bottom of their measurement is near 100 megahertz, but ours was near 105, so a little bit higher for the deepest nulls of the filter, but still working fine. And the upper 3 dB point matched. So that's pretty similar. As far as return loss, they have a plot for that as well, but they only have a large plot. So we'll be looking at this very small portion here where there's a little uh, dip right before the stop band, and we have that little dip right before the stop band. It's uh, right here near marker 2, and then lots of mismatch. And then a little dip right after the stop band before it starts to come back up again. So I'm going to repeat the calibration process, and then I'm going to take a much wider measurement, and I'll show that to you in just a second. But before we do that, I'll walk you through how to save these measurements using the Nano VNA QT program. Now, normally we would save a .s2p file uh, for S parameter file with two ports. That would mean that we have measurements S11, S12, S21, and S22. The Nano VNA V2 is a half VNA, if you will, and it only measures S11 and S21. This program will not want to just uh, export when you capture just the measurements from port 1. And we don't want to export an S1P because we are interested in the measurement S21 as opposed to just the measurement S11 from a, only a reflectometer. So what we have to do is we'll capture S1 from port 1. And I'm not interested in flipping this device around because it's probably reasonably symmetrical, and uh, that would mess with the connectors in the calibration. So I'd be breaking other rules by doing that. Now, while the program will error if you try to output it just like this, what we could do is just take the measurement again and send that as if it were the second set of S parameters, and then export it, and make a note to ourselves that only the S11 and S21 measurements are to be cared about, and we can probably toss the rest. Or we could just use them as if it were perfectly symmetrical in a later simulation, should we want to, say, simulate an S2P block in an ADS schematic. So once you have both of those, you just hit export S2P, and I will save this into amateur radio folder, name it something intelligent, 
We'll go from 70 MHz to 126 MHz, 201 points. We duplicated S11 and S21 to complete the file. This is the RTL-SDR FM band stop filter. So we'll save that. And now if you're curious what these files look like, an S2P file is simply a text file. So here's what the S-parameter file looks like. You can see we have S11 and S21. These were our real measurements. And we didn't perfectly duplicate these because what it does is take the whole sweep measurement again and then dump it in as S12 and S22. But they are close. So like 0.81, uh, 168.87, that's the phase, magnitude phase. And 0 0.81, 168. So they're, they're pretty close to the same. They're off in the last couple of uh, decimal places there for the magnitude. And we can see the same thing, 0 0.276, 0 0.276. So they'll be approximately the same. And if you want them to be exactly the same, you can go ahead and copy and paste and repair the file that way. These files will be linked in the description if you want to download them and then use them in your favorite uh, S-parameter viewer or uh, schematic simulation program. So without further ado, let's move on to the wider measurement. All right, so here's the larger sweep presented in NanoVNA QT. Here's the sweep parameters. We're starting at 0.5 megahertz and we're going to 3 gigahertz with 1,000 sweep points. So that's approximately 3 megahertz per sweep point. Uh, stimulus minus 15 dBm. If you hit OK, it will resweep this whole measurement here. So you got to make sure you hit cancel if you don't want to wait a long time for that to happen. This calibration took uh, almost 10 minutes because I was uh, getting a little distracted between clicking the buttons immediately after one is done. but it does take a couple minutes when you do this many sweep points. So here's the general shape of uh, both graphs, and I've tried to put the markers as close to I could as they were in the finer sweep. Now let's just take a look at the shape of this versus the shape of the measurements from the RTLSDR page. So here's the transmission loss. We have very similar shape, that 55 dB attenuation, and less than minus 5 dB everywhere else, if not a little bit better than that. And we're seeing about the same thing here, all the way up to 3 gigahertz. Their measurement only went to 2 gigahertz. If we look at our return loss, we could see that there's big mismatch in the stop band. And then there's a minus 15 dB point. I'll use the marker 6 as a pointer here. We get up near minus 15-ish dB in the VHF uh, through VHF ham radio band, 2 meters. Uh, commercial band near 150 megahertz, and then marine band and NOAA weather radio. That's where you're getting the least good matching there. And then we have a big dip, and the bottom of that dip is at 438 megahertz. So if we take a look at that as compared to the rtlsdr.com graph, we have this part is all pretty much the same, but we're missing this extra dip at 1.5 gigahertz. So if I go up to 1.5 gigahertz, we just don't have that big dip with better return loss there, where they get better than 20 dB, but we don't. So that could be due to our measurement setup, or our filter could be slightly different. But the measurements on rtlsdr.com are pretty similar to the measurements that we've made here with the Nano VNA V2. So uh, I'd say they're selling a quality product that uh, works as advertised. If you like this video, please consider leaving a thumbs up or subscribing for more content. Peace.